Hi there, my name is Kelvin and um, the purpose of this video today is just to orient you in the use of this OEC 9900 Elite C-Arm here. So I'll give you the basic overrun, basically how to use a C-Arm in a quick short video here. Alright, well looks like we got our patient there, we got a, uh, <laughs> a box of uh, used drugs. Alright, let's come on over here. So the first thing you do when you come into the room before you use a C-Arm is you want to input the patient information. Um, you could hit new exam, make sure it, it clears the screen there. Um, with scheduled exams, we can um, pull up a work list with the patients. You know, um, basically their, their name, their MRN, the session numbers, and the procedure that they're having. Of course, this is, you know, there if, well, if your hospital has a, well, a risk system, essentially. Um, the other one's resume exam, where we can pull up an old exam and basically restart it, or can, you know, pull up an old exam just to view its images. But for today, um, we'll just put in my name here. All right, there we go. And I'll uh, skip the birth date. Uh, we don't need, really need the MRN. Okay, here we go. Let's just change the profile here. With the 9900, um, you have to pick a profile. Okay whether it be general, which is just general fluoroscopy, you can copy and emulate the 9800 OEC C-arm, spinal work, orthopedic work, vascular, and a bolus chase for um, basically a, um, an angio. Uh, but let's just use general, okay? All right, let's start. So, here we go. Our patient's on the table. The C-arm's positioned over the patient there. These are our controls here, okay? This red button is the exposure button. These two green buttons here is up and down. This will raise the C-arm height, and this will lower the C-arm, okay? And let me just explain the locks here. This lock right here, if you unlock it, flipping, flipping it up, you can pull the C-arm, well, the whole C in, or out, or towards the patient, okay? Let's pull it out into its uh, fully retracted position there, okay? And let's lock it down, all right? This lock over here, which you see right here on the C arm here, closest to the large C, this one is used to do angulation. Basically obliques or laterals. So of course, once it's unlocked, you can grab the handlebar here and you can rotate this into a lateral position. I won't do this right now because it's gonna hit the bottom of my table there. Something you have to watch out for, okay? All right, let's, let's return it back to, to zero degrees, okay? And we pass that point, it's right about there, right there. Lock it. And although you can't see it, um, if I push this thing forward, and we have a, um, a tilt function here. Basically, you can make caudal or cranial tilts. So if I unlock this right here, okay, I can actually grab the C of the C-arm here and push it down for basically a, um, a caudal tilt or turn it this way for a cranial tilt. Okay, here we go. Okay, and it's very close to zero. There we go. Let's lock it now, okay? This over here is the foot, foot brake, okay? So right now, when it's flat like this, it is not locked. The C-arm has the ability to move forward, and when you want to turn it sideways, there's a handle over here on the right side. The left one is just a stationary handle, it does not move. You can flip this handle to the side, and you can pull the C-arm, see how the wheel is turned now? You can do north and south travel on this. Basically you can move it up and down without having to worry about position, about moving it forward and throwing out of alignment there. Okay, and you can straighten it up. But of course be careful when it's in the straight position because if you push it forward the C-arm can wobble about. It can drift to the side. Something to be a bit cautious about there. Okay. The other controls here that are not as big but they are equally as important, is wig-wag. So you can, oh, this is a tight one. I usually just have to pound it a little bit. There we go. 
You see here? You can wigwag the machine. I mean, you could kind of wigwag it, kind of like a dog's tail, like that. All right. This is typically useful in, um, basically, for lateral alignment. Say, for instance, a C spine or an L spine. When you're doing those kind of surgeries, um, if the patient's not properly positioned, well, for the lateral, you can see the end plate, and of course, you want a wigwag to try to avoid that. There is a special function on this particular C arm. It has something called the GE Smart View. That, um, that, well, basically, this lock and this lock down here, well, if I unlock both of them, I can actually swing the C arm side to side to correct wigwag without having to recenter. A unique option that not every C arm has, but, well, then again, I'm not going to display it here. There's simply no time or need for that here. Just want to describe the basic functions. Okay, let's do a little bit of floor. I am currently wearing lead. My, uh, 101 Dalmatian uh, lead apron there. All right, let's get this positioned over our patient there, which is that box of drugs. Okay, right there, okay. So right now, as you can see, I swung this to the side here so I can do up and down travel, okay. I can go ahead and lock this because I'm satisfied about the position now. In this position, it is locked. The C arm is not gonna move as you can see, the wheel is yeah, just stuck in that position. All right. So here we go. Now, I want to center this a little bit better, because if you see from this angle where you're standing normally as a tech, or in this case, even a student, you can't really tell that this thing is, well, centered properly. Because if you come over here, it's not. So instead of taking the lock off here and trying to drive the C-arm forward in towards the table, I usually don't recommend that because, again, you can wigwag the whole machine by pushing it forward because these two wheels move independently of each other on each side. So the machine's going to wobble and, again, you can lose, you know, your alignment. So this is what I do. I unlock the, the C, if I, this, for this lock right here, and I push it in until I'm roughly center. A lot of times, you know, I may not be a perfectly experienced tech. I've been doing this for two years, but I still don't get this perfect sometimes. You know, I just have to go in and shoot and find out, make my correction based on it. So there we go. It is locked. And I will take a picture right now, okay? Well, let's press exit here. All right, here we go. Okay, we're going to floral. Um, there's two ways to floral here. You can just press it down really quickly and let go. And that will just take a snapshot. If you press it down and hold it, that's continuous floral. Um, because we're just taking quick pictures, um, we're not going to flow. We're just going to take a quick snap here. Here we go. Let's watch the screen. you notice that the lights above there are going to turn orange when the exposure is on here. There we go. Look at all the insides of that patient. Hmm. Notice that's not quite centered right. So let me correct it. Okay. Now, the picture is actually backwards. Um, you look over here, there's a little smiley face on top of the eye eye here. This is supposed to be face towards the head of the patient, hence the uh, little smiley face there. All right, so let me think here. Let me pull it back towards me a little bit, take another picture, and there we go. It is properly centered. Okay, now let's say if you want to go to a lateral view, okay? This is my personal tip. I like to unlock this lock here. Okay, for the C arm to, to be able to turn. And I take this one off simultaneously. Now let me show you why, okay? I lock this one back so it won't move, okay? When you start to swing here, okay, sometimes you're not positive if this is gonna strike the table or not. Something you don't really wanna do, especially in the middle of a surgery, hit, hit the table that the patient's on. So, what I do, okay, let me just bring it back to position. I take this lock off, okay? With this lock unlocked, okay? Don't try to take off more than two locks at a time. You're just gonna be struggling with the machine. Not a good idea. So, as I'm swinging this with my hand, I have the ability to push it forward or backwards so that I don't strike the table. I usually tell the assistant or the surgery tech on the other side, help me watch this side come up. 
All right, now that it's up, I'm going to lower. Now, as always, now of course, given you know the, the physician has no problem with this, you always want to move the eye closest to the patient. This basically reduces magnification and reduces dose, especially skin dose to the patient. You don't want the tube end too close to the to the patient. Further away is, is ideal. Let me go ahead and lock the uh, C arm here now. Now that's in a kind of a lateral position. Bear with me. I only have one hand because the other hand's holding the camera here. Okay. And now it's in a lateral position. Oh, it looks like we're not quite centered to the patient there. So I'm going to unlock this now. I'm going to turn the handle. And I'm going to push it forward a little bit there. Uh, right about there looks pretty good. Okay. And I'm going to lock my C arm now. And I'm going to take a quick snapshot. Now, what you can do is if you want, you can hit save. Okay, you can save the picture. And you can flip the picture from the left side to the right side, which I'm going to do right now. Make a copy so that when I take this picture, okay, here we go. And now we can see that this side is in the lateral view. And this is the AP. So they can, so the doctors can take a look at both sides and do a comparison, see it from both views at once. And of course, you've got to remember, save your images, don't lose them. All right, the other functions here, um, I'll just quickly go over them. You can rotate the image, left and you can kind of do counterclockwise, counterclockwise. Okay, I don't know if you can see this on the, um, you see a little um, triangle there? You basically want to point this towards the head or north where you want to rotate to. You can play with this all you want until you get the right picture. Um, it does not affect the other side though. Okay. This is for image um, flip and reverse and basically flip the image. So if you want to get the correct orientation, you can. Just use that tool. This is magnification. Okay. This is now magging up one step. Okay. Reducing the scan size of the II here. All right, let's take a look at that. Why not? Now it's magnified. Okay. Hence the um, the dose actually went up as a result. Okay. One more. One more step. Okay. Even more. Now to take off the mag. No mag. Okay. So the next the next functions here. This is for collimation, okay? This is to angle, well, uh, I'll just demonstrate it really quickly. It's easier. Um, let me just show you shutter collimation, okay? This is to open the collimator, close down the shutter collimator, okay? Now, you're going to see a line, a circle running around the picture here. It's very faint, but let's say I want to collimate just to this very small area here, okay? I can just fl hit floral, and now, you see, it trims out the rest. Okay, now let's open it back up. Okay, no collimation. Okay. Okay, and the next one here. I don't know if you can see those two little lines coming together now. Okay, you can use this orientation tool to change your side collimators. Okay, these are basically the um, the side shutters. There you go. And that's how you collimate. Let's reset the collimation. Let's open it back up. Okay. This is for contrast, automatic control of the, um, the brightness and contrast. Or if you start pressing these, it will bias it. Basically, you can control the kind of bias that you know it'll, the machine wants to lean towards. It'll keep it automatic, but you can have it go naturally a little bit brighter or a little bit, a little bit darker. If you turn off the automatic here, Okay, you can manually control brightness and contrast. Okay, right there. Okay, here we go. Turn back on. Um, I don't want to play with these because if it's floral, I'm going to get irradiated as a result. You can do manual KV or manual MA. Okay, you have to turn off automatic and then you can do your own techniques. And you raise the MA. Okay. Prefer automatic. Automatic works in most situations quite well. Um, the other functions here is pulse. Okay, pulse radiography is um, basically turning on and off the floral machine or the generator several times a second. Now, of course, you could change the rate. 
correspondingly, this will reduce the dose significantly as well as reduce floral time. Okay? Um, film. If I had a film cassette holder attached to the II, I can actually shoot a um, kind of like a spot film actually using the tube. With that, you can set your own technique with the KV and, and mass here. Okay? Uh, low dose, what it does is it raises the KV, lowers the MA. Very useful. Okay, and just quickly, briefly, you have your, um, your remote here. This is the save. This is the floral. And you need this on the remote handle, of course. Um, you don't want to be able to press it here. You have the boost function, which tempor temporarily can raise the MA much higher than its normal operating MA. Like, for instance, 12 MA or 16 MA. Standard here is about, it seems to be about, well, anywhere from... 1 to 6 MAs this is the normal operating MA here on this machine here, typically speaking. And of course it depends on what's, you know, what the patient, you know, habitus is. Um, let me just get this machine back into the AP position, okay? So you release this lock right here, you pull up the C-arm, okay? Of course I should have done this at the same time. So I can pull the machine back, okay, to avoid striking the table, okay? Okay, let me just bring this back to zero now. There we go. And I can raise up the C-arm. This will increase my OID. Um, you may need to do this in case the doctor needs to put a needle in the middle or, you know, do a procedure and get their hands, make the few cuts, whatever they need to do. And if it's permitted, lower the machine back. Get the eye as close as you can to the, to the patient. And that's as far as it goes. You see the height there is zero right there. And you can shoot the picture. There we go. So why don't we flip this picture over to the next screen here, okay? Using this function here. Okay, now that it's flipped back over, let's go ahead and reflow. Okay, x-ray. There we go. And we got our new picture. All right. I think that pretty much covers it in terms of what I need to... Just basically how the C-arm works. Um, no, there we go. And of course, once you're done saving the pictures, you know you can send it off to your, you know, to your packs, or even print them out if you want. Okay. Image directory basically lets you go back and um, review your pictures here. Okay, let me just show you. It's going to be on the right screen when it comes up. Oh, it looks like I did not send any pictures, or I, I didn't save any. But that's okay. I don't want to, anyways. All right. Well, that's just basically a quick breakdown of this machine. If you want to know a little bit more about this particular C-arm, I do have another video that um, I have on my YouTube um, specifically about how the C-arm functions and its features. Hope this, in hope this video is a little bit informative here. Um, I guess I kind of geared this video towards more of the students, you know, just basically how to operate a C-arm. You know, I work in a hospital where, well, you know, we have a lot of students for our x-ray program. So, you know, as, as an assistant clinical instructor, or, you know, I get this question all the time, how do, how do, I, how do I operate the C-arm? You know, I, I want to learn how to drive it. So this video should help, um, at least tone down some of the questions there. Um, yeah. I guess I could quickly show what the GE Smart View does. Might as well. I sound like a GE rep. All right, here we go. Let's get this into lateral. Okay, let me just unlock this lock now. It's hard to do one hand. All right, let's get this into lateral. All right, let me just hold this down so I can lock my locks. Okay, let's lock it down. Okay, flip this and disconnect this. Okay, so, oh, it's automatically tilting. All right, so the way this works, um, normally I have two hands to do this, but let's say, this patient is not perfectly lateral. Let's say it's slightly tilted like that, okay? You have the ability to wig-wag the machine to try to get a perfect lateral. Let's say this is a spine without recentering. Because normally when you wig-wag, you have to recenter the whole machine and take more pictures. Supposedly with this system, with this kind of arm here you see, you don't need to do it. So basically you can, you can whip it around like this 
or potentially the other way, okay? And you can see that where it's being centered, which is like right there, the centering point is not changing. Uh-oh, I'm stuck here. It's kind of hard to move. <laughs> yeah, this is really done with two hands. Um, oh boy, it's going to be an interesting ride here. All right. Yeah, hard to do one hand. You need two hands to do this. Now look at this. You almost got it perfectly centered. And I didn't have to move the machine. Well, at least the base of the machine to recenter. But after you're done, make sure to put it back in the zero position. Okay. All right, and turn this one back so that it's in its neutral position here. Okay, there we go. I'm going to flip it back up now, get this back into an AP position. Oh, see what I mean by hitting the table? Collision. So that's why I take this lock and this lock off. Because I want to be able to swing the machine and be able to pull it back as necessary. This way I can also do my centering ahead of time as well. Put back a zero, lock it. Lock this one too, and we're back to AP. Um, when you take this C-arm out for storage, let's turn off the uh, machine now, okay? Now, if you're running an older C-arm, um, particularly 9800 or 9600, you want to wait about one minute after you know doing any of the saves or any system functions before you turn it off. This can result in battery. I mean, this can result in um, basically hard drive failure or data loss. There's a little tag there that says that. But you can turn it off here. It'll tell you. Don't plug, don't unplug the machine. It'll shut down on, on its own. Okay. Now it's off. So of course when it's off, you want to make sure this thing is back parked in its what we call what I call the neutral position here, the storage position. This is all the way back as far as it goes. Okay, everything's at zero. And the C-arm needs to be lowered all the way down here to zero. This is so that when, it trans when so we transport it, if this arm was sticking wide out and this were to hit something or wobble, the C, it does not warp this arm here or damage this column. That's why you want to reset everything to its lowest position or to its, you know, non-retracted position, you know, to its retracted position there. Okay, let's park the C-arm here. Let me pull back. Okay, this is kind of hard to do one-handed. Takes a little practice. Oh, that's why I can't move it. <laughs> turn this back. Okay, here we go. Let's turn this, drive it. Let's park the C-arm. All right, here we go. And I'm going to go ahead, turn the C-arm now, and I'm going to park it back in its position. All right, there we go. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm not unplugging the C-arm, okay? Why I'm keeping this thing connected, okay? The reason behind this is that a lot of, mo I see practically every modern C-arm out here, they have a battery pack that's inside the, um, the C-arm itself, inside here, inside this panel. It's a battery pack that allows the machine to generate high KVs because normally I don't see how you can really get high, true high voltage out of just a simple little AC you know, outlet there. You know, 120 you know, volts at 15 amps. You can only do so much with a transformer. So the batteries inside this unit here um, allow it to operate at higher KVs, kind of using it as like a capacitor or like a, you know, like a boosting battery. Now, you want to leave the machine plugged in after you, particularly after you do an exam here, because you see this little light here next to this key here, I'm going to take it out. You want the machine to charge its batteries. If you regularly just unplug it, you know, after you finish the exam and just store it without it being plugged in, eventually it can damage the battery packs and it can cause other damage, like damage the charger because the battery packs or, you know, the battery cells are ruined or dead and a host of other problems. Something just to be aware of. Okay. 
Other than that, let's see arm is uh, parked. It's ready to go for tomorrow for another exam. All right, hope this, hope this little video was informative. Uh, I know I'm not the best speaker out there, but I hope, you know, at least you learned something from this video. All right, and thanks for watching.